Hello, everyone. Hello. Austin, normally tradition is to ask you to describe what you do in your company. But I'm very curious, in every video I've seen of you, you're wearing exactly the same jacket. What is up with that jacket? Is it a lucky charm? Does it have DNA hidden in it that you print out? Some kind of lucky entrepreneur sweat in it. Uh, I've had this jacket ever since I, I guess I landed in the States and brought me luck. And now every few months someone mails me a new one. <laughs> but I still keep this old one, so stop mailing me vest in the mail. All right, so you're here because you do something very cool, which is print DNA. And do you want to explain to us how that works? Yeah, so everything that's alive runs DNA code. So everybody in this audience runs code. All the microisms, uh, organisms in your gut and that live on your body run code. All the plants run code. All the food you eat runs code. Everything around you is code. It's a digital file. It's a text file that can be uh, attached in an email that can be opened and printed and booted up inside of a cell. It's a, it's a very big thing because it means everything can go from analog to digital, that everything is text. So when and you say you print it, what does that mean? How, is it like I printed my boarding pass to come here? Yeah. Um, so what people do is, uh, let, me, let me maybe go through and make this a little bit more real. Uh, if you want to make a creature, you design it using a computer program called Genome Compiler. It's an Israeli company we partner with. You print out the DNA, so you can use it even on a cell phone, drag and drop your DNA sequences. You'll send it uh, via email to, to us. It'll go on our printer. We'll print out your DNA. From there, we'll send it back to you in the mail on plates. And you'll take the, the plates and you'll add a bit of water, like these. You'll, this is what it looks like when you get it. You puncture this, uh, this foil, you add water, and you can take this uh, genetic material and put it inside of a cell to make a creature that is a product. So this was the first uh, product that we made, was Glowing Plant. I think they came here last year. This is actually shipping next month. But we put about $5,000 into this company to shoot a, a video about how to make plants. And we had no idea whether they could actually make a plant that, that glows, but we knew we could make a pretty slick advertisement for it. So we just did that. We did about 60000 70000 the first day. We did half a million dollars in the first six weeks, all off of some idea in someone's head that we could make a plant that glowed in the dark. So these guys, after they got the money, they hired a, a couple people. They drug and they dropped these uh, Lego blocks, these DNA pieces around to take a coding uh, program that runs in a firefly and to get it to work inside of a plant. Then they sent it to our printers. We printed it out for them. And then they put it inside of a plant. And then the, the plant uh, actually glowed. So this is uh, the actual plant. All right, let's, let's step back for a second, Austin. Yeah. And so most of us here know what DNA is. We know what it stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Right. We know it's got a double helix. Right. It's made up of four characters, A, C, T, a, C, T and G, if I'm yeah. correct. Um, but what took me a while to understand is that DNA itself is inorganic. It's something that it's composed of it's or not chemicals. something that's living, right? Without yeah. getting too philosophical about it, mm -hmm. DNA itself is not living, is that correct to say? No, it's, it's just a polymer, like mm -hmm. a plastic. Mm -hmm. It's a, an arrangement of four chemicals in, in, in different orders. Right, so that thing you showed us, which you pulled out of your pocket, what is that? What does that contain? This is the form factor it comes in. So after we print it, we make many copies of the DNA, and then we dry it out so that we can ship it to you guys in Europe, because you're kind of... Uh, it's sometimes more difficult to move around stuff mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. Europe. But if it's dried, it's actually treated, uh, and we put a bit of paper on the bottom, so it's dry on paper, so it's actually treated as letters on paper. <laughs> so it gets around the regulations. Right. And when you say you've made a glowing plant, yeah. so you extract a bit of DNA from a firefly, you combine it with, I mean, how does that work? Can you no, 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 it, it, isn't, it doesn't work like that at all. So now that sequencing has become so cheap, 
Uh, it's, you can get about six billion letters for $1,000. Mm -hmm. Because it's so cheap, you can sequence almost every organism that's alive. Everything that's cute, fuzzy, delicious, whatnot, you can right. sequence it. So Firefly's been sequenced. Uh, different glowing things in the ocean have been sequenced. And if you know that information, you can basically use that as a coding library. So if any of you guys write code out there, you know that you can go out and, and use libraries of code that's been mm -hmm. written by other people. So in this case, this is, a, this is a coding library from nature. And then you can combine that with other parts from nature. Uh, say, for instance, parts that make the gene expression, mm -hmm. meaning the DNA go to RNA, go to protein. Uh, so DNA sequences that make this thing express or go from DNA to RNA to protein right. in a different species. Okay, so a glowing plant sounds like a good idea. It sounds fairly benign. Yeah. Um, although you have said, I read this on the information, yeah. um, every human being will be designed on a computer. That sounds less benign. It sounds kind of scary. What do you mean by that? I'm going to maybe I got the baby. Right. So yeah, every human being will be designed on a, on a computer. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, some interesting things have been happening. Uh, IVF happened a long time ago. Um, I think that baby, that baby is already an adult, like 30 years old or something like that yeah. these days. And very recently, the first child was born in which their entire genome was sequenced prior to the embryo being put into a human being. Okay. And by doing that, you're able to select. So currently, selection is done inside of the mother, inside of the womb. Right. So oftentimes, they'll put in two or three or four different embryos and then try to pick you know, a winner uh, mm -hmm. that will actually make it. So that's why they oftentimes have triplets, doubles, uh, which can be sick and premature. Um, and then uh, potentially, it, you, know, you're, you can have DNA that makes you born and alive that mm -hmm. doesn't make you last very long. There's many diseases in which you'll die uh, within the first, like, say, four years. Uh, cystic fibrosis. Um, you could have uh, Tay-Sachs disease, uh, sure. really awful, awful diseases. And then some diseases will take much longer to, to, to affect you, like mm -hmm. cancer and childhood cancers. But, but it's all diseases in your DNA. Yeah, but all diseases, um, all traits that we have are the result of our code. Either our human code uh, or our non-human code. Uh, we, our genes are about 99% non-human. Okay. So you're suggesting we would be able to make humans who could effectively last forever? Yes, yes. So uh, aging is a, is a disease. It is uh, not. It is because we are running a program that's designed for us to die. Why would we have a code that makes us die? Well, uh, old people get parasites that could be passed on to a younger population. But actually, more importantly, the male population, as it ages, mutates its sperm. And uh, every 10 years or so, doubles the number of mutations. So if you had people living 500 years, um, the species would be unable to replicate because you would right. have you know, uh, just all these uh, old people accruing that really couldn't produce very viable offspring. So it makes sense to start all over again. Um, but when you can read the code um, and you can fix the code, that's no longer uh, something that, that's uh, necessary. So from the window of my desk in my office in London, I can see a building called the Francis Crick Building. They're still building it, the Francis Crick Institute, um, named for the Nobel Prize winning uh, discovery, discoverer of DNA. Mm -hmm. um, they've put a billion dollars into it, includes building it, uh, funding for research and so on. It'll have at least another 100, 150 billion, uh, sorry, million every year. Uh, you're a guy in San Francisco, you've got a small team, you started a company called Cambrian Genomics. Why is it, or how is it that you came up with this idea that these guys with a billion dollars, admittedly they haven't started yet? I mean, why is it that this is a big deal? How is it no one's thought of it yet? Well, it's, it's hard. Um, it, it's really an integration play, kind of like um, you know, SpaceX or Tesla. There's no single great innovation in either of those companies. It's basically combining a lot of existing technologies. In our case, we started off with uh, buying these off-the-chip cheap microarrays so we could produce 
Each one of these chips does about 100,000 different strands of DNA, about mm -hmm. 100 letters long. Uh, so you can do uh, roughly around 8 million base pairs per one of these chips. Mm -hmm. The problem is no one in history has been able to use this stuff. Most, maybe like 30% of it is just wrong. Okay. And the other problem is it's all mixed up together when it comes off of these chips. Right. Our, our thing uh, that's unique is that we were able to make the cost of DNA free by taking those DNAs off of those silicon chips after we made the, the full length things, throwing them onto these uh, glass sequencing chips. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the first two part uh, laser bonded glass flow cell in the world. Uh, this is, allows us to recover DNA post sequencing. So sequencing looks like this. We're basically looking at blinking colors. Uh, you know, when you're testing out whether transistors work or not, mm -hmm. You use electrical probes. In this case, we're using four color probes to just look at the letters. So the colors represent, there's four colors, each yeah. one represents. Yeah, there's like one of red the is uh, A, green is T, and so on. And so you simply look at the colors, you know what each strand is, mm -hmm. you know whether it's good or bad. The way this takes all the cost out of the production is because we don't fix things. Right. Uh, we make things massively parallel and we don't mm -hmm. fix them. So people don't realize this, but Transistors used to cost a dollar each. They cost a dollar each because they were made one at a time. And the cost, even today, of fixing a single transistor on a 10 billion transistor wafer hmm. costs more than, one will cost more than the other, you know, uh, nine, 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 you know, billion. It's uh, easier to just buy a new set. Right, so what they do is they, after they make them, they test them. They, what's good, what's bad, then they dice the wafer and then they sort them. Hmm. There's no fixing involved, there's no one at a time involved. Right. So we're able to make millions of strands at a time, um, sequence uh, billions of strands, know what's right, what's wrong, what we want, where everything is, and then we use a, a laser to go and collect the correct ones. And it's very fast. Hmm. So in a few minutes you can print out about, uh, you can fill one of these plates, which is about 38,000. Hmm. Uh, $38,000 per plate, current price. $38,000. Yeah. Which is before Cambrian Genomics came Yeah, around. now this is a, a few dollars. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, and, and that's, that's pretty amazing because we're now almost at the point where the writing and the reading of the DNA is the same cost. Right. And when you can read and write DNA for the same cost, you can really treat every living object as a digital file that can be shared, and distributed, and rewritten. Um, so if you look at our code, it's really, you know, so to take a step back, I mean, what does our company want to do? Hmm. Our, what our company wants to do, it's very simple. We want to change everything that's natural and make it synthetic. That includes humans, plants, animals, everything, because synthetic form can be much better. Nature doesn't have DNA laser printers. They can't rewrite things. They can't refactor right. things in software. And we can now. So we'll be able to rewrite everything that's alive and, and improve on it. So I'm sure you've been asked this question by everybody whom you've told your idea to. Have you considered the moral or ethical quandaries of this? Is that something you think about? Um, yeah, sure, why not? Um, why not? But, yeah, I mean, w w this printer is, is probably more powerful than a hydrogen bomb. Uh, it has the power to create and destroy entire worlds. Um, so you probably don't want to put one in every home. Right. Uh, so I think this is going to be a centralized service forever. And the creatures, like these Chickasaurus rexes, um, we probably don't want to, you know, let anyone make those at their house, right? But you've made it so cheap, you've essentially made it so that anyone could make it, right? I mean, anyone with a reasonable amount of capital. Um, yeah, it really, to, so what's, to... what's really awesome about this is anyone that has a mobile phone and Bitcoin can design, you know, creatures. Right, no, so I'm trying to understand the um, I'm trying to reconcile those two aspects. The anyone with a mobile phone and, and Bitcoin, do you take credit regular? card? You have right, a credit okay. card, that's fine too. Um, good. So anybody with a mobile phone and a credit card, which I assume is most people in this room, yeah. um, could make a Chickasaurus Rex. 
Uh, Could make the DNA. Now, would we right. want to send them Chickasaurus DNA? Probably not. We probably don't want people making Chickasauruses in so their home. So you keep the printers? Yeah, and, and we'll also keep the creatures. So what do we get? We get the DNA. You get videos of your creature. <laughs> you don't get the real creature. Right. All right, so let's go back to the glowing plant. What are the other applications you've made so far? So the next two, com so first of all, after we did glowing plant, we got banned from Kickstarter. Uh, it was one of the more successful campaigns of all time, but we uh, were banned, and they banned all GMOs because they're a bunch of, you know, hipsters from New York, and <laughs> fuck them. Uh, so we started our own Kickstarter, and it's called, oh. you know, it's Kickstarter for creatures. Okay. It's called Creature Creator, and it's a program uh, for consumer product companies. So the first one was Glowing Plant. Um, the second one we're launching is called Petomix. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I have Petomix back here somewhere. Oh yeah, here we go. It's Petomix. Pedo, Petomix? Petomix. So you can make your pet's poop smell like bananas. Do you want to explain? Yeah. So actually, probiotic dog food is a multi-billion dollar business. And a, a, a decent percentage of all pet food sold in the United States, at least, has living bacteria in it to improve the digestion of the animal. All we did uh, was we bought a bunch of mice from a pet store. Mice? Mice, yeah. I rented an apartment uh, and filled them with the mice. Hmm. And then we, we took this uh, construct. So this is a team at MIT. They actually raised uh, a bunch of money, incorporated a company called Ginkgo Bioworks. They abandoned this project, but I, I decided to bring it back to life. Uh, but this is, this is the know, construct. When you say things like bring it back to life, that in the context of what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, really brought it back to life. Yeah. So this was the construct that they built, and they sort of abandoned it because they thought it was a funny, stupid, you know, ha ha, you can make your fart smell like banana. That's stupid. Who would want to do that? Right. I was like, well, I would. <laughs> so because it's now all digital, all I had to do was pull this sequence off the internet and print it out. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, I put this in an E. coli. It really does work, and it's strong. I should have <laughs> brought some of the stuff with me, but I don't know if I could have gotten through the airport so well. Uh, but it's, it's a very potent, powerful banana scent. Probably doesn't smell exactly like a natural banana. It smells like the banana candy, because mm -hmm. it's actually the same pathway that's used to make the uh, artificial flavoring for banana candy. Right. I yeah. See. So we put this into E. coli. We, f we, uh, we cheated. I, I fed these uh, mice a bunch of antibiotic mm -hmm. to like wipe them out. So you killed the mice. No, I didn't kill the mice. I killed the, the stuff living in them. Oh, right. Yeah. The, the microbes in their right, intestines. Okay. And then I fed them this E. coli stuff, and they, they, their poops smell like bananas. Really, really powerful smell. And have you tried this on yourself? No, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's probiotic, so... Um, I mean, I guess I, I guess I have to, right, if I'm going to make other people. Right. I got to do it myself. But you haven't yet. But I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not fearful of it. I mean, I have a bunch of it in my office that I show to people hmm. and try to get them to drink it. Right. <laughs> I don't want to be the first one. <laughs> I suspect there will be questions. Yeah. Um, quite a lot of them. But uh, before we throw it open, one last question from me. So we've discussed glowing plants, um, banana poo, and designing babies, yep. all of which does still sound like science fiction, even if the glowing plant does exist. What does Cambrian Genomics, what does what you're doing mean for me, for the people in this room, today, right now, what does it mean for us? It means every living thing, um, the, the food that you eat, the things you, you taste, um, the pets that you have, the insects that you see, even the air you breathe is made by the microorganisms and the plants on, on the surface of the earth. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about the demonetization of things that are expensive, that are made through uh, ex dirty, costly, synthetic uh, chemical processes what, being made what biologically. Sort of Hmm? What sort of things? Um, so, uh, say for instance, um, chemical like uh, expensive chemicals used in manufacture of clothing hmm. that are made using synthetic chemistries uh, can be made much more cheaply in giant fermenters. Like waterproof cotton. 
really, uh, anything that you can uh, imagine uh, can be made using biology. And what's really going to probably more exciting than anything I've talked about today is, is living metal. Living better? Yeah. How so? So now everything that's alive, it, maybe, I don't know, I think it kind of looks similar. And the reason it looks similar is it's all, this, it's all made out of the same stuff. Hmm. Everything that's alive on the planet is made of 20 components, 20 amino acids. Okay. Now the proteins, that's what all this is. So this isn't DNA, this is proteins. Our bones, our fats are all organi organized mm -hmm. using these proteins. Because we are at the point where we're now capable of writing full genomes, we're able to expand the, we're able to expand the code meaning we're able to have more than 20 amino acids, meaning we can have metals incorporated into plants um, and animals. Right, I know I said that was my last question, but I'm curious. Um, to extend your analogy of moving from analog to digital, um, of coding human beings, uh, just living things, computing is digital, and then if over time, as we connected them, eventually we connected a lot of computers. Is there a way to connect human beings? Yeah. So there's a field called optogenetics, uh, which allows, it's actually um, genes from algae. Okay. They open and close their pores in response to sunlight. Hmm. And so those have been taken and put inside of human brain cells. And so you can shine light on the human brain cells, they'll open up. The uh, salt content will change and it'll fire an action potential. Um, so you can turn brains on with light. The next step will be to take the firefly pathways and, and get cells to uh, create light in response to firing so that we can both read and write uh, the brain. So create thoughts, but also read thoughts. You know, I honestly have no idea if what you're saying makes any sense. Um, Who controls and monitors your work? you could definitely build a hazardous. Yeah, you could absolutely. I mean, Ebola is only 18,000 base pairs. Um, Sorry, Ebola is? 18,000 base pairs. 18,000? Yeah, I think smallpox is hmm. similar in size. And for the sake of comparison, uh, mouse... a human genome is 6 billion, right? right. So uh, curating like really harmful viruses right, so, is... So who controls or monitors your work? Huh? Who controls or monitors your uh, work? Currently, it's uh, unregulated, completely unregulated. Mm -hmm. um, how long do you expect it will stay that way? It's been unregulated for 40 years. There's an industry group um, that of, of about six other companies using okay. older methods. Uh, we actually plan to sell so through, through those companies. The largest manufacturer is Genart in Germany, and we're, we've taken orders from them to replace the, the German facility with our San Francisco right. facility. And are you facing any regulatory pressures? Say what? Are you facing any regulatory pressures? No, not yet. Not yet. Hi there. Uh, I brought this along. Oh, thank you. Which one would you like? Which one looks good for you? We've had that one. Uh, yeah, we've had and we'll have two more. All right, wonderful. Which, Which one would you like? Have, um, this one. Yeah, that's this one. Yeah. Hang on, we'll highlight it. Go for thank it. You. All right. Okay, how long does it take to grow or print DNA and get shipped to Europe with a smiley face? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so it takes two oh, days okay. to make the DNA. It takes two days to read the DNA, it takes one day to print the DNA, and it takes two days to amplify and assemble the DNA, and then it takes another two days to resequence. So you're looking at around 10 days. Great. Okay. But in 10 days, you're not making one strand, you're making thousands to millions of strands. So actually, before we go into the next question, if I, once I get that, if I've ordered it, what do I do with it? You, t you would basically add water, hmm. and then you would uh, transfect a mammalian cell. You would transform a bacterial cell. In the case of plants, we attach it to ballistic uh, mm -hmm. and shoot it inside the plant to, to get through the, the cell wall. Right, okay. So I take a living thing. Yeah, but there's many, there's many different ways of getting DNA into cells. Right. And that actually brings us very nicely to, to the next question, which is, you can see this, right? Yeah. Yeah, you have to choose one to highlight it. Oh, right, okay, this one. Sorry. Good. Which one would you like? Sorry. This one? Yes, please. Okay. Please. Uh, so are you saying that life can be synthetically created out of dead matter? Mm, no, right? Well, I mean, A, T, C, and G is pretty dead. Um, 
Yeah. No, I think I think what whoever it was was asking is they're basically asking you if you can do Jurassic Park. Oh yeah, so um, good question. So dinosaurs, uh, none of the DNA exists anymore. But what I showed on the screen was a hotson. It's just a South American boar, bird that's got claws on its. Uh, when it's a juvenile, it has claws on its wings. It also has sharp teeth. Um, so there's also from time to time chickens that are born with claws and teeth, and you can look at those uh, differences in the sequence. And, and, and then once you know what's causing those, you can overexpress those characteristics. Um, the, the, I mean, so I mean, but the question: Why would you want to make a dinosaur? I mean, um, I think it's why not make a dinosaur? You know? Have you not seen Jurassic Park? <laughs> Um, right. Finally, Austin, it's an important question. How is your company making money? So and to that I will add, so how much funding do you have? Our company makes no money off of these fun projects. Uh, we make our money selling DNA on plates to GlaxoSmithKline, to Roche, uh, to Thermo Fisher. Um, and what's good about that is we're able to subsidize uh, the production of, of DNA to these small startups and give them uh, free lab space, free equipment. And uh, if it's a consumer pro product, uh, which is why we favor them at the moment, all they need is like five, ten thousand $10,000 to shoot their video. They'll pull in you know, half a million dollars. Uh, they can hire you know, five people. Their only cost is people. And uh, so that allows us to participate in the product space. Right. Whereas with these larger companies, we can't participate in the product. We only participate in, in the selling of the So you sell the to the big companies and use the money to fund the little companies. Yeah, like Robinhood, yeah. No, just kidding. <laughs> right. Thank you very much, Austin. Yeah. Thank you very much, Leo. Thank you very much, Austin. Thank you.